The first factor that I'd like to talk to you about is parental resilience. What does it look like? And what are the everyday actions that we should be seeing in our early childhood centers? Well, first of all, what it looks like is families exhibit strength and they exhibit flexibility in general life stress. Do you see that when, when your parents walk in in the morning or in the afternoon from their jobs? Two, you see families recognize the value for their unique strengths. They know who they are. They understand that they are professional people. They understand their role as a parent. Also, you see families identify themselves as hopeful, optimistic, and confident in who they are. You see families that have strong problem-solving skills. When they get in trouble, they can back up and make strong decisions. And you see parents and families practice regular self-care to keep stress from interfering with nurturing their child. So we have parent resilience. We don't see a lot of parent resilience these days, do we? So how do we foster that parent resilience in our parents as early childhood professionals? Well, first of all, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that we honor our parents. We place them in the position that they belong that they are the parents, that they are the ones who make the decisions for their children. And we respect that. We honor their race. We honor their language. We honor their culture. We honor their history and their approach to parenting. We honor them, not to say that we agree with them totally, but we honor and respect them and their opinions. They may not understand what is developmentally appropriate practice, but in essence we say, okay, we will honor that. We honor you as far as we can without breaking regulations or policies. We value what they say. We have that inward um, demonstration from our heart that we truly love and care for that family. We encourage parents to manage stress and we talk about how to deal with stress. When we see a parent stressed out, we begin to model that behavior that they should be doing with stress, like exercising and eating right. Those are types of ways to deal with stress appropriately. Okay? We support parents as decision makers and help build their decision making and leadership skills. How do we do this? That's why we have parent letters that go home that talk to parents about what is developmentally appropriate for their children to be doing. We encourage them to participate in family activities so that we can model reading a book in front of the parent the correct way or playing in a carnival game or and taking turns, whatever that may be, we model that. We create welcoming and supportive environments in our early childhood centers, and we build those relationships with that parent. We say we believe in a two-way communication, and I may not agree with you, but I will listen to you, and I will respect your opinion. Lastly, we involve those parents 
in the program, in the decisions that take place with their child. We don't just as educators say, we're moving the child to the two-year-old room. That's where he belongs. No, the parent has to be involved in that decision making because they want to feel as though they are just as important as the caregiver. And we help parents understand how to buffer <clears throat> their child during stressful times. <clears throat> I understand this is a hard one when a parent will not work with you and you're dealing with strong behaviors in your class, annoying behaviors, spitting, kicking, hitting, throwing stuff, running out of the room, and you tell the parent the behavior, and the parent says, well, they don't do that at home. And it ignites a fire inside of you, and you just want to go, <laughs> that is not appropriate. As much as we would like to just go all over that parent and give them up and down the tree about how their parenting skills stink, blah, 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 that is not building that parent up. <coughs> we need to begin to talk to parents, even though they will not listen to us, about the buffers that need to be in place to initiate those positive behaviors in their child. So that's what parent resilience looks like. It's actually helping parents <coughs> learn how to manage stress and move forward when they are faced with challenges, adversity, and trauma in their life. That is factor number one.